Jesus. Alright. The mic is right up here. I need to make sure I'm live. According to this, I'm streaming live to YouTube. Okay, some people are saying, some people are saying good things in chat. That's, oh, good God. That's all right. It seems to be working. Hooray. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is a live build and I'm a little bit late. Sorry about that. Uh, considering what just happened seconds before I went live, I'm actually happy to only be about 10 minutes late. But um, this is a live build, so it's going to be a little rough around the edges. It's probably going to take a little time, usually uh, maybe an hour to two, depending on how things go. I have a new case from Corsair that I'm showing off, the Air 740, which just was announced yesterday. And then I've got dual 1080s and all this other stuff. I'm going to go over all the parts, but uh, I'm also going to double check and make sure everything's working properly. Wow, all right. It seems like things are working properly, so that's good. I do have a couple different... Uh, like scenes that I can show you so I will have the top-down view oh no hold on mute also Audio input, there we go. Sorry guys, one, one quick change. All right, I hope that fixed things. Uh, all right, can everyone still hear me? Let me know if you guys can't hear me. Uh, that's often how things go when I have to so what happened right before I started was um, I normally like to use OBS for these streams however I've only used OBS to stream to Twitch before and getting it to stream to YouTube which I thought was going to be simpler just just wasn't working so yeah um, audio sounds great yeah, it might have it might have sounded like sounded like crap a second ago because I switched to a source with a bad audio, but all right. People saying sound is good. All right, so let's let's try to proceed with things here. Let's start off with the rundown of all the parts I'm using. So first off, uh, for the graphics card, two of the EVGA GTX 1084 the Win cards. Uh, these are fastest card available outside of the Titan X Pascal edition right now. And I originally assembled uh, all these parts, by the way, I, I originally sort of gathered together or planned out in uh, the beginning of August in my August builds video. Uh, I ended up building this system a little bit later than I was in intending to, mainly because Corsair hit me up and said, hey, do you want to use this new case? And I was like, sure, but it didn't launch till right now, so that's why it's a little bit delayed. Uh, also, originally I had plotted this, planned this build out with uh, Strix, Asus Strix cards. I wasn't able to get those from Asus, though. Uh, they didn't have any available. and. I couldn't hunt any down to buy, at least temporarily. So we're going with EVGA. It's okay, they still got the RGB LEDs and stuff. We're just not gonna be able to use it with the ASUS Strix software to coordinate everything, but we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna do a follow-up video to this one once it's all assembled, where I'll do testing and all that good stuff. Pardon me, the memory is Corsair Vengeance LED. This is the new stuff they just announced at Computex. These are the white LED versions, so they got LEDs going across the top. Uh, so you can now get Corsair LED memory without having to pay for the dominators. Uh, for storage, I have a Neutron XTI. This is also from Corsair. Very fast SSD. Um, yeah, it's about a terabyte. I'm actually not gonna be installing the mass storage drives, the five terabyte drives that I parted out for this build in this system, simply because I don't really need them for the testing I'm gonna be doing. Uh, and I also don't have them, and I didn't order them. So that's how that's gonna go. But that'll have enough space to get the operating system installed and some games and whatnot. Uh, for the processor, picked this up yesterday, ran down to Micro Center. Uh, this was a, this is an i7-6850K. So Broadwell E, 
the uh, equivalent processor to this one on the uh, last generation, Haswell E, is the uh, 5930K. They're both six cores. Uh, you have to pay a lot to get an eight core part. You gotta pay a thousand bucks to get the 6900K. You gotta pay 1700 bucks to get the 6950X, which is in my test bed back there. But uh, this one, I think it's still very expensive. Still a lot more than I would prefer it to be. Who knows when Zen launches, maybe we'll see more reasonably priced six core processors from Intel. Motherboard is right here, X99 Deluxe from Asus. Uh, I actually just did a video on this, so I repackaged it so I could unbox it again here live for you guys on the stream. And then some more Corsair parts. Uh, they're ML140 fans. These are maglev fans, magnetic bearings. Uh, and they have pretty cool LED effects as well. These are just the white ones. So it's gonna have mainly white LEDs, but then there will be some RGB LEDs available through the motherboard, the motherboard and graphics cards. So, um, you know, we'll be able to change things up if we want to on the coloring side. Uh, this is a H100 IV2, very solid uh, closed loop cooler from Corsair, 240 millimeter, and um, it'll get the job done again. Gotta keep that CPU nice and cool. That's one thing about these 6850Ks, the unlocked processors from Intel, they don't come with a cooler anymore, so you have to buy that in order to get yourself, well, keep your CPU cool. Finally, power supply, HX 1000i, 1000 watt power supply. Probably a little bit over a kill for what we're doing. You could get away with like 850, I think, with this build. Maybe even less than that if it's high quality, but hey, this is a 80 plus platinum, and it's all black cables and all that good stuff. I'm setting stuff precariously here beside me. I hope none of it falls over. I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, things are looking okay still, so I'm happy about that. Let's take a closer look at this case, though. I only have had the briefest of chances yesterday to actually, like, pop the, the box open and check it out. Here, I'll do this. So, I figured it's high time for a closer look, and hopefully you guys will be able to see everything. See, this is what I do usually off camera when I'm talking about cases or whatever. I get my motorized Lazy Susan, put the case here, and now I can spin it around. I could even plug this in and do it here. I'll be lazy, my Lazy Susan. There we go. How does this thing work? Ta-da! Look, and it spins around so nicely. Oh, well, that's actually, I was worried that the top of it was going to be cut up when I, when I did this. If anyone's wondering what this is, it's a cake master. No, it's a, it's a carousel. What is it called again? Yeah, it's a carousel. This is actually made for making cakes. So you can like do the thing on the cake while it's, you know, decorating it and stuff. Anyway, so this to me is a case that combines some of the aesthetic stylings of like the uh, Corsair 760, for example, which uh, I've built in as of a couple of years ago, uh, with the uh, general design, the cube style design of the Air 540, which they also sent me one of. I had it out in the other room, and as I was getting ready, I was like, maybe I should bring that out here and show side-by-side -side comparison, but I don't want to get too far into things here. But um, you have the design here with the vertical, or sort of rotated power supply, so it's vertical here. So you got this extra chamber on this side which is fairly wide. So you get a much wider case than typical tower style cases, but uh, you do get tons of room over here for cable management and all that sort of thing. And it does mean that on this side right here, uh, where there's a window, which I can pop off, I'm leaving the plastic on for now. And it does slide off in very much the same way that the uh, Corsair 760 did. Anyway, so there you see, you get plenty of room inside and yeah. I don't know what else to, to, to say about it. It is still vertically pretty tall, um, but this does have eight expansion slots, for example. So if you're using like a larger size motherboard or you're doing a three or four way SLI configuration, not that that's a reasonable thing to do or anything. Everyone thought that in my, my uh, $15,000 build that I did the other day was that I was being serious with that. And it's like, you guys asked me to. I put, I put it to a vote and everyone was like, yeah, do the four way Titan XP SLI. Anyway, uh, let me take this other side panel off. I have not done that yet. All I really did yesterday was a really quick look at this to make sure there were no surprises that I should be aware of. No captive thumb screws. That's sad, but whatever. Uh, and this has plastic or tape on it. There we go. 
All right, so there's 360 view. I'll leave that and I'll look at chat and make sure nothing's exploding. Uh, yes, I know I have the Air 540 linked in the description. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks to everyone who's watching right now. Holy crap, I have like 3,400 viewers. That's insane. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. I hope I don't screw anything up. Anyway, so as you can see, lots of uh, storage on this side. Got the uh, 3.5 inch cage up here, 2.5 inch cage right there. Something's down. I don't even know what this stuff is down here. What the, the impression I got with this was that Corsair is intending for people who water cool in this system, because there's a ton of radiator support, to do a bunch of water cooling stuff in here and then maybe. I don't know, via modding, or, or maybe do a, a clear panel on this side as well so you can see water cooling stuff, which might be kind of cool. By the way, I, m I might be totally wrong about that too, so <laughs> bear that in mind, but it looked kind of like there might be a pump mount up here or something. I don't know. Maybe you can move the cages around. I really have not that much direct knowledge about this case, um, other than that it was sent to me. I think they sent me a marketing document about it, which I didn't read. Because, you know, it's a case. I just want to explore it and see what happens. Like putting those cages back in. But anyway, though, if I was building this system as originally intended, then I could put my 3.5-inch drives up here. As of now, I'll just drop that 2.5-inch over there. Because I don't think there's any places for 2.5-inch drives up here, as far as I can see. For uh, radiator support, though, let me, get, let me cheat on this off the box. It is pretty good. Uh, Alright, so on the top, you can do a 240, a 280, or a 360. Uh, on the front, you can do a 280, or a 240, or a 120. And at the rear back here, you can do a 140. So what I'm going to do is a, the 240 at the top. I might go push-pull on that, although I still haven't decided. Actually, I'm probably just going to do push because I don't have enough fans to do push-pull. And I'm going to remove, I'll, I'll do two 140s in the fronts with the LEDs and then one 140 in the back with the LEDs. So, all that said, uh, why don't I get started and find out where the heck I put my mechanical screwdriver. Hold on. No, oh here it is. Alright, I freaked out briefly that I had not put this somewhere convenient. Hold on, let me turn this off. Calm down. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, it would be convenient as if it has a Phillips head bit on the end. Okay. Another thing to point out as I am building here, starting the deconstruction process, is that it's warm in here. And it might be getting warmer. And I do have an air conditioner, which I might turn on at some point. For right now, I'm leaving it off purely uh, because I don't want it to be noisy, but uh, I might turn it on at some point. Oh yeah. And look, I have mag magnetic trays now, thanks to people who sent me magnetic trays for the screws as I take them out. All right, so I'm gonna start off by just prepping the case a little bit. Get these fans off of here since I know they're not gonna be used and that'll help uh, get things ready for installing the new fans. Then we'll do the motherboard preparation, get the CPU installed, all that good stuff. And we shall enjoy, oh god, we shall enjoy our Saturday morning here, building a new computer. Alright. Thank you for posting the PC part picker links in chat. I'm assuming that was the link to this build, but you know. Uh, Alright, so another good question here. You know what I think I'm going to do? Let's get rid of the lazy Susan. That's better. All right, completely blocking my pathway to walk over to my workbench there if I need to. But all right, uh, the question with cases is always how the heck do you get at the parts on the inside? And I sure hope this one works as most cases do. Nope, I'm wrong. All right, that is a good question. Good question. Does it come from the back? Ah, all right, so <laughs> most cases will have like a piece at the top and a piece at the front, and those are just covers that go on over the top of just the 
steel shell of the case that, aha, that is supposed to be the actual structure. So this is just plastic. And it does have a bit of hex ventilation right there. Not that tight as far as dust prevention goes, but we'll do a little bit of a job. And then that gives you access to the 240 or 280 mount at the top. All right, what else do we have in here? So once that's off, you can get at this piece, and I'm guessing, yeah. Let's pull this, and I'll usually get it. Aha, so cool. Uh, metal prongs to attach that on, that's nice. They're not always metal. And then this again just has some uh, hex ventilation up there. These cross hatches, which I don't know if that's if it serves any actual purpose or if it's just there to provide a ladder for small mice to climb up the front of your case. That could be. Give it some thought for that. Anyway. So now that that's off. Oh, that's interesting. This kind of pokes out at an angle here, and you can see uh, that's the power button right there. Pretty straightforward. Anyway, now I can remove these fronts. Oh, there is a removable dust filter right here. Magnetic. That's good for intakes. Always gotta have dust filters on your intakes. Now, if I had a little bit more time before I started all this, what I wanted to do was set up something like right here like my laptop is over here. If it was right here, I could actually like glance at it and read chat, but at this angle, I kind of have to turn around. Not as convenient. I don't know what people are saying. Do a backflip. I don't, I don't know how to do a backflip. At least unless I'm in a pool. Here's a good question for you guys. The 140 millimeter fans at the front of this case are on rails. You can't do three 140 millimeters at the front, but they are on rails, so you can adjust them up and down. So the question is, with those LED fans, which are gonna show through the front of the case a little bit when the LEDs are on, do you think those should be positioned like right on top of each other, like that, so they're next to each other. Or you can like use the rails to space them out, you know, put a gap between them if you want. What do you think? Close together? Further apart? Somewhere in the middle? Anyway, I will, I will glance at chat in a moment, hopefully, to see what you guys think of that. Uh, all right, so pretty cleaned out in there as far as this side of it goes. Uh, I am going to... Well, let's take this tape off. Let's see why. Wait, what? It goes all the way around. So the tape is on the 2.5 inch drive cages to make sure they don't go everywhere while you're shipping. And these are the, oh no, these are, this is the cage. Oh, it's one of these. All right. So you can actually remove these. I'm not going to try right now because, um, I don't want to break anything and I'm not positive how it's done, but these 2.5 inch drive bays, you just snap in the 2.5 inch drive from the side and it locks in place with a little clip. But these, since there's four of them stacked on top of each other here, you can actually pop these off one at a time. There's little clips so you could pull like just one off of there if you needed more space this way or something like that, I imagine. So that's kind of nice, I guess. Modularity. Uh, yeah, and I, I guess other than that, everything else is pretty Pretty much just space for mounting all your drives and whatnot. Oh, look at all those happy faces and clouds. It's so much fun. Uh, sorry if chat's a bit of a mess for those of you who are watching live on YouTube. Uh, I don't think I have any moderators in there. And I don't have much to say beyond that. All right. So, getting... I think I might just do the power supply right now. Just while it's right here. Get that in there and taken care of. Make, make the case significantly heavier for me to lift and move as I'm doing things. But not that there's any risk of this system falling over to the side or anything like that since it is quite wide. But um, 
that'll keep things less top heavy. <clears throat> I'm just making excuses. All right, Corsair HX1000i. I actually did a video on the 1200 watt version of this. Very solid power supply. Not quite as large as some of the higher wattage PSUs out there. But, uh, pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty simple design. Uh, this does have silent operation. At low, uh, when it's drawing not as many watts, the fan won't spin up. That's always nice. Beautiful feature to have. And I'm going to try to do a bit of planning ahead. I'm also doing this kind of backwards because I would, and I feel like I normally save this part for later in the build, but get it out of the way before we move on to the more relevant top down shots of what's going on. All right, so we're going to do 24 pin main motherboard connector. We definitely need that. Uh, we need four, right? How many peg connectors does the, does the EVGA for the win have? I think it's got at least two. I forget if it's a six and, a, and an eight. I think it's a six and an eight. I could be wrong about that. Okay. Let's get these out. So the nice thing about fully modular power supplies is you only need to use the cables that are required. And the cables required for this build are going to be two to plug into the motherboard. The 24 pin main power connector, of course. So we get that connected there. We also are going to need not just one supplemental power for the CPU, but two. This uh, ASUS board has an eight pin and a four pin. So there's one. Also get these PCI Express connectors out as well. Oh my God, where's the other one? I'm positive there's another in here. Wait, is this it? Yes, there it is, okay. Uh, it also has Corsair Link, so you might notice lots of uh, Corsair parts in this build, and I should thank Corsair for sending them over. They, did, uh, they didn't sponsor this video, but they did send me all the components to build the system with, the Corsair components at least that you see here. Um, and the nice thing about using all Corsair components is you can use the Corsair Link software, which can tie into stuff like your power supply, uh, and the liquid CPU cooler to give you information about performance, temperature, all that good stuff. All right, so six plus two pin for PCI as well as CPU. So there's one for the CPU. That's PCIe. There's a second for the CPU. Oh my gosh, MB67, thank you so much for the donation, sir. A five dollar donation. Those do tend to stand out because they're in green text. So. Uh, but yeah, thanks. I'm glad you like the builds. I'm often torn about doing live builds like this. I like doing it because it's on the fly and it's unedited. And if things go wrong, things go wrong. Also, hopefully this won't happen today, but you know, sometimes the, somebody knocks at the door and the dogs kind of lose their shit and go tearing out there. But hopefully that won't happen today. I even we have uh, we have gardeners that come out front, and we even have confirmed with them that they will not be showing up. I was kind of worried. Oh, what if they show up randomly in the middle while I'm doing it, and then there's, you know, leaf blowers and stuff going on outside. But they shouldn't be here today, so that's cool. All right, here's one, two more of these. Then the only other thing I should need power for, other than the four plugs for the GPUs, the three plugs for the motherboard. Uh, is one more plug just for the uh, SSD. So I'm going to get all those connected to this first because once this is installed here, it's not that dif difficult to reach. And I was building in the uh, NZXT system that I did. The I guess I kind of did that last month, but it was for the build a month and a half ago. And I installed it. I installed the drive first, and it was it had that that, that kind of area down at the bottom. I installed the power supply first, I should say, and um, it was a little bit of a pain in the ass to, to get in there to connect up the rest of the connectors that I needed. All right, so let's get one here for some SATA power, and I do not believe this case has a fan controller, to my knowledge. It does have a button for LEDs, which I'm not sure what that affects. Uh, like, I don't know what LEDs are built into this by default. 
Or is there some kind of connection you can install just specifically for LEDs? Power switch. There's an LED switch. All right, so maybe you need an adapter to use that or something. I don't know. Maybe these ML fans will come with some extra types of plugs that I've never seen before to allow me to connect all that up. Who knows? All right, so let's do this. Um, the side, hold on. See, I knew I was gonna do this. Oh God. Hey, uh, moving the light. Sorry, one sec, guys. Okay. This is what I was trying to show. So there's the ventilation there, and that ventilation needs to be right up against the intake for the power supply so that it can draw air in and not overheat. Operate at peak efficiency. This system also has a little bracket here for the power supply down at the base with a simple thumb screw so you can push it forward or back. And that's just to go up against the power supply and hold it in place. Uh, Matt Gibbs, thank you for your donation, sir. He just got Gigabyte G1 Gaming 1080s putting EK water blocks on them. Uh, does the Gigabyte hand bit high bandwidth bridge fit? Uh, hold on. All right, so I will be using this high bandwidth bridge to connect my two graphics cards together. Um, I don't know if Jacob or anyone from EVGA is watching. Probably not there at PAX. But um, yeah, you need the high bandwidth bridge for the highest range of performance, especially at high resolutions uh, with the GTX 1080s. There is something special going on in here. It's not crazy special like you might think. Actually, if you guys want a cool video on that, uh, Steve linked one yesterday by, uh, I believe his name is pronounced Der Bauer, but I'm totally, I hope I'm not wrong about that. He's German, D-E-R-8-A-U-E-R. -E -E he's German, he's an overclocker. Met him before at some events and stuff like that. Anyway, he took HB bridges high bandwidth bridges as well as the flexible bridges and he sent them to be x-rayed um, to actually determine like wait hold on are these really needed is this Nvidia trying to like upsell us on something or tell us we need something when we really don't what's going on inside there and um, you guys should go I'll go check the video out he does lots of videos they're very good they're much more in depth than a lot of the stuff I do because he knows a lot more about overclocking and stuff and he doesn't have that many subscribers as of yet so you know Push some more stuff his way. He talks about good things. Anyway, what he figured out by x-raying these things is that the trace layouts uh, in the LED versions, the, the rigid PCB LED ones, as well as these, are basically have wiggles in them, which is a simple way of uh, them attempting to make the trace leads from one point in the SLI connection to the other the exact same length because they're changing or they're increasing the frequency at which data is transferred across that bus. And when you increase the frequency of something like that, even something as minuscule as the length of a trace, even if it's that long versus that long, can introduce timing changes. Um, so basically you need these bridges so that as it's operating at higher frequencies and especially communicating um, at uh, resolutions like 5K and above, uh, that timing stays exactly dead on operating at, I believe, 650 megahertz as opposed to the old 400 megahertz. And that's why they say you need these. Um, there are people uh, who did Hardware Unboxed. I, I, I think Hardware Unboxed did it. I, I hope I'm not wrong about that. Uh, who have tested like two flexible bridges and found, oh, it works just as well. But um, I would imagine in certain situations. So it seems like for like 8K resolution and that kind of stuff, that's more important. But back to answering your question, I think this bridge would be fine because the uh, ones from NVIDIA have these like kind of jagged parts that come off at the bottom and that is what's conflicting with the EK blocks. These are much more vertical. So I think something like this or something like the EVGA one would still work fine for you. They did find that the, uh, I think Jay figured out the NVIDIA um, ones conflict with the EK blocks when you put them on. Um, <clears throat> the Air Force 740 has a software LED header to control the uh, HD and SP fans. All right, cool. I did find that header in there. I'll see if I can, or it's over here actually. So it's an extra, this is just an extra header that says LED switch coming off of the front panel connectors. I'll see if I can connect that up and get it working. 
I may or may not be able to do that on the fly today. Um, if not, I'll uh, be doing some work with the system this next week and I'll see if I can get that figured out. The follow-up video on this is not going to be live. It will be a produced video with editing and all that. It'll probably be a lot easier to digest than this. But for anyone who just wants to see how this is done with all of the boring parts included, that's, that's what the live builds are for. That, and I don't have to edit it afterwards, which is kind of convenient. Although I did spend a lot of time doing setup. I was originally going to try to do this yesterday, and I'm really glad I didn't because this whole area out here was much more of a mess even than you see right now. And I did a lot of cleanup. And I did some preparation, everything except making absolutely sure that the stream via OBS was going to work properly. That was my main downfall. All right, so power supply is in. And I'm going to do a temporary job on these right now and just kind of shove them all in here. This is the, the greatest benefit, in my opinion, of these big cube-style cases, is you, is you just have this massive area right here where nothing really matters, and you can just shove it in, and you can't see it from the other side, and airflow isn't really affected here. There's no need for airflow. The, the power supply has its own. Uh, hard drives. Hard drives up here might need a little, little airflow going to them, depending on how you have that configured, so I might consider that. What did I do with the side panel? Oh, I put it back here. Anyway, let me pop this back on so I can work on the other side of this build without worrying. How does this work? Is that, is that how this works? I don't know how this works. I'm confused. It's, oh, it's, up, it's backwards. See, that's the other part that you get in the live build that you probably don't get in the edited stuff. I don't know. If I screw up, I, I try to leave it in from time to time. Depends on how actually humorous it is. If I'm, a, if I'm in a good mood and I screw up, is this, there's a chance that this might not want to stay on without these, without the front pieces there to hold it in. Yeah. Right? Am I going crazy here? Yeah, I think that might be the case. Get it? The case? No. Oh, terrible joke. Uh, all right. Well, well, I'll deal with that later then. <laughs> uh, yes. Matt Gibbs, did I say thank you, by the way, for your comment and your donation? Much obliged for that. Uh, and yeah, let's just do this. Let's set it that way and move on with our lives. All right. Uh, it's high time I switch cameras. No, that's terrible. That looks awful. Let's do this. I had it set up before so that I could do the overhead camera one way and then, yeah, that's all the OBS stuff I had set up that's broken now. But I will, and I can actually control this a little bit to like zoom in and stuff. Crop my belly out. All right. Oh, you know what? I did all that and then I never actually plugged in the SATA one. That's all right. There's lots of distractions doing live build. One of them is just the vaguest attempt at keeping things organized. I got my tray though for the uh, <laughs> my tray for the screws and everything. Wow, that's just it's an emoji war going on in chat right now. I'm not gonna involve myself in that. Okay, let's move to the uh, fun part here, which is going to be preparation of the core components. That being uh, the motherboard, memory, CPU, uh, and then we'll get that installed, CPU cooler, and then we'll be like almost done. Moving along at a nice clip today. Again, I'm not organized at all. I felt organized. I felt organized up until five minutes before this live stream started, and then I was like, oh crap, there's so much more I could have done. But anyway, I am unboxing the X99 Deluxe 2 for the second time. See, I repackaged everything so you guys could get like the real build experience of, it's, it's as if I have just bought everything for the first time. All right, now, there is extra stuff that I could install here, like accessories. They got like a Hyper M.2 accessory in there and some other things like that. 
I'm going to bypass that for now again just for the sake of moving along here since we're live and all. Uh, although I do need a uh, IO, an IO shield. Whatever the heck that might be in here. This is a blessing and curse of getting something like the X99 Deluxe from Asus. Uh, you get a lot of accessories with this motherboard. Although right now, I just want to find the damn IO shield. Ah, there it is. There we got IO shield, and I'm going to need one SATA cable. Cool. That should be all I need as far as motherboard accessories. Place that back there. I'll clean all that stuff up later. All right. While I'm here and thinking about it, let's go IO shield. Never forget the IO shield. How many of you have ever assembled a system and forgotten the IO shield? <laughs> ben Dover wants me to dab. Uh, How does that work? You go. I think that's how it's done. That's just, that's all I got though. Uh, but thank you, Ben, for your. For your one British pound donation. I believe that's about a buck thirty US, according to the current exchange rates. Alright, IO Shield is installed. If you ever ins do a computer build and forget the IO Shield, you might come to the end and look at it and be like, oh crap, I forgot the IO Shield. It's basically like almost rebuilding the entire system. Because you have to remove your whole motherboard to get the IO Shield installed. I did early on. I had one. I had one time where I actually tried to wedge the IO shield in between the motherboard and the case. Uh, didn't work. Just, just, just to keep things. <laughs> That's the simple, the short, the short result of that attempt was nope, not working. I do have trash down here. That's convenient. All right. So let's get the motherboard out of here. Like so. I'm going to just set this case aside entirely for now. And I'll try to give you guys a, close, a closer view of this, theoretically. Theoretically. Yes. Oh, I love the GH4. Okay, so there's the motherboard. Uh, we need a processor. There's a processor. Uh, we need memory. There's memory. That's what it's going to go in right now. So processor. Look how tiny they make the boxes on these now. 6850K. Uh, what I should have is. Where'd that go? Oh, sorry, sorry. Just trying to get a bleed. Alright, so processor comes out first. Six cores, 40 threads. That has the benefit of getting the 6850K over the uh, about 200 bucks less uh, 6800K. Let me try to keep that. Oh, yeah, somebody asked me in, in chat for this banana for scale. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I did get the banana out. It's a little, it's a little soft actually, but it's okay. All right, here's our memory. It's looking pretty. I'm tripping over cables. Don't even know what they're there for. All right, so remove the banana. <laughs> Let's get the processor installed first. All right, here's how processor installation goes. You have this plastic piece over the uh, actual socket. That's to protect the very delicate pins inside. So what is a very common way to do this is to just leave that on for now. It'll keep the pins a little bit protected. But you got two of these bars. I'm just going to push this one in. This, uh, this LGA socket is designed so you push the bar in to release it and lift it up. There are some where you push them out to release it. I think most of the 2011-3 ones are like this though. Anyway, so the second bar goes up there. First bar will allow you to lift this actual piece up. Then you have the delicate socket, which is there. 
These are kind of bright, aren't they? Let's see if I can adjust ISO without knowing what the heck I'm doing on the camera. Nothing can go wrong. That's better. Yeah, yeah that's better. Okay. <clears throat> now we have our processor. Ah. See, very delicate socket. Processor's there. Processor has a gold triangle in one corner, which you probably can't see very well, but trust me, it's there. Uh, there's also notches on the top and bottom, which you can kind of use to eyeball to align yourself. There's also a triangle on the corner of the socket there. It's at the base. It's also usually on the cover itself. Triangle, triangle. So line up the triangles so you know where the corner goes. And then uh, grip the socket or the processor by the side. Lower it down slowly. I give a very, a very light, a very slight jiggle, just side to side a little bit. Don't want to push down on it. The socket will do that, and then you can go ahead and start closing things. Uh, I'm, you can leave this plastic piece on. I'm just going to pop it off right now, though, because, because I can. One side goes down. And let me lower the the one arm. It takes a little bit of pressure to push it down on. And the second one goes in, and now our processor is installed. Hooray! Look. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Yay, processor. It's best ever. All right. Now, I am not positive whether I should go for the memory, because I do have, yeah, that's fine. Let's do the memory. Memory, I'm going to install just because it's here and it's easy. Sometimes you can do the memory later. Uh, if you're installing like a air cooler, CPU air, oh, those look kind of nice. I, mean, I didn't get a chance to do a close-up view of these, but here, let's see if we can. There we go. It's not bad. It's got kind of a flat gray finish. Not shiny. I, I like I like the matte finish. Good job on that Corsair. I have no idea if I'm keeping this in focus or not. Anyway, there it is. And then there's a LED across the top, which hopefully you guys will have a better view of. Once I get them installed, all right. Uh, Asus boards almost, and actually most motherboards these days will use the outer bank of memory slots. That's just to give you, if you have a, if you have two sets or if you're not using all the slots, it gives you a little bit more space on the inner bank. It's a thoughtful thing of them to do. I forget when they started doing that. But yeah, we'll just line these up one at a time. Firm pressure from the top, and it snaps in. The, those little side pieces should just or, uh, also, another thing Asus has been doing is uh, the lower clips here actually don't open. They're fixed. Only the top clips actually open. Depending on the motherboard, though, you might have clips on both sides. But pushing down, the clip should just bite in there and grab a hold of it, and then uh, that means it's plugged in. One more kit. Uh, also, there's a notch. Did I mention that? <laughs> Look for the notch. The notch is slightly offset. That's how you know which uh, which way to put these in. They are not reversible. All right. Now we got memory. So there's our motherboard, which is uh, set up and good to go for now. And it lets us move on to actually installing the motherboard in the actual system. Right? Theoretically, that's what I should do next. Uh, let's do. I don't know. I don't know what to do next. I should read chat. That's what I should do. Uh, Linked Dust Productions says, "Love the builds." Quick question: I have an i5 4460. Should I upgrade to the 1060 now? Save for the 1070, or will the 1070 have a bottleneck? It's impossible for me to say directly what will bottleneck what with your processor and your GPU. It varies depending on what you're doing with it. 4460 is perfectly adequate for gaming right now, though. I think it'll be fine paired up with a 1060 or a 1070. Um, tough call on whether buy the 1060 now or save for the 1070 later. That's always a difficult choice. Uh, I'd say if you have something to work with now that's adequate, stick with that. Save for the 1070. If you need a graphics card to start gaming, then get the 1060 and then you know wait six months and see what else. What see how the marketplace changes or whatever. What other options you have? 
Okay, I will care carefully set the motherboard aside. And move back over to the case. Ah, this is cables. Regretting my decision to do the cables all first. Okay, uh, let's do some uh, case fans though. Good to get these installed while I have a chance. And I never looked back to see what you guys thought about where to install these case fans. Sorry, but I'll try to do that. My tips. I'm trying to give you guys tips. Install the CPU cooler backplate. A uh, nice thing about building on LGA 2011 or 2011-3 is it comes with a built-in backplate. That's actually one of my, well, I, I really like the Enthusiast platform from Intel because it caters to enthusiasts and stuff. Yes, it is very expensive. That's the crappy part about it. But it's so much better building uh, in a system that has, like, uh, the, the built-in backplate is so just so convenient for, for aftermarket CPU coolers and everything. That's super nice. What else comes with this? Okay. Uh, Corsair with your ML140 Pro LED fans is giving you a couple zip ties and some screws, which I'm probably just not gonna use because I don't really need to. Use the ones that I already took out, which I think are a little bit nicer. I'm blind, okay. Anyway, I'll try to read chat. Looks like a lot of people are talking about Harambe, as they should be. He will be missed. Uh, people, if you can't put a PC part picker link, it's probably because links are blocked. I'm honestly not 100% sure how that is configured right now. Shows you how. All of my efforts were just in like getting everything cleaned up and getting the camera set up. The actual configuration for the live stream was left till later on. It's because I've gotten too accustomed to doing our live show. And our live show, like, you know, we've worked through some kinks here and there, but we got everything set up kind of how we want to. And we don't really use the computers that we use for the live show for much else. And so we, we really just like sit down and we don't even think about it until like the very last minute. Like, oh crap, is everything fine? Yeah, everything's fine. And then we just go for it, so. Yeah, again, my, my problem was usually when I live stream here, it's uh, by myself at least, it's just to Twitch and I use OBS for that, or at least I have on this system. Um, had not streamed straight to YouTube with OBS. Thought I had it set up, didn't. And that brings you up to speed, I think. All right. When installing fans, pay attention to where the cable comes out. Remember, you can rotate the fan. 90 degrees or 120 degrees or whatever. And I just try to position that cable coming out to where I can quickly get it tucked away back somewhere else. In this case, you guys probably can't see. Yes, there you go. In this case, I am positioning it like so. So then I can take the cable and push it back through that top grommet there. All right. I like this magnetic tray. I wish I knew off the top of my head who had sent it to me. Oh, wrong way. I do know, and I have the letter from him because he actually sent a couple, uh, but I, I, I can't remember. So thank you, thank you, uh, friend who sent the magnetic tray. He actually did it after the last live build I did where I was doing the live build rambling like I do while I do the live builds and mention like, I don't have one of those magnetic trays. And then like my PO box, like five of them showed up like a week later. That was cool. Okay. Fan installed. One fan installed. Also got to pay attention to the direction of the airflow with fans. Simple way to do that is usually the intake is the part without the crossbars going across it and the out or the exhaust is where the crossbars are. Um, although some fans will also put arrows on the side that indicate the rotation, the direction of the rotation. So this one actually does have that very small right here. 
where Sarah put it. Uh, basically, one arrow direct showing where the airflow is, which is that way, and then another arrow shows the direction the fans spin, which is that way. Anyway. All right, so I'm not sure in chat if we decided. Wow, hello, by the way, to anyone who's watching live from the UK. I'm sorry when we usually do our live show that we're not at a time that's convenient for people in the UK. I'm glad that yeah, you guys are able to join us. Not like those filthy Australians who are probably all asleep right now. I'm just kidding, I love Australia. Uh, all right, Nico Bowling says, uh, thank you for your donation. One of the bearings on his MSI Gaming 980's fans is gone. Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Can you repair it? Repairing it might be difficult. I mean, repairing a bearing fan is, is very challenging, especially a smaller one. I would contact MSI about that. There's a good chance you're still under warranty. You might be able to, if you talk to the right people and support, get them to like send you a replacement fan that you can install yourself, but you might need to just RMA that and, and turn it back in. If it's the fan failing due to, to, to a bearing in it, that's definitely should be covered by warranty. Uh, finally, Jeremy, not finally, but Jeremy, thank you for your $2 donation. I wonder if it'd be possible to make your own high bandwidth bridge for NVIDIA cards using light mass matching of the traces. Uh, that's I'm sure that's possible. I don't know. When you're a company like Nvidia, like your concern is making sure it works for everyone, like across the board. So you'll often see very conservative estimates of like uh, I don't know GPU frequency for for example, because I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna install this and you guys be able to see it uh, because they have to be. Well, most like NVIDIA GPUs, for example, can run at a, at a decently higher frequency than what they tell you it will out of the box. They have to make sure to account for every single GPU that comes out in every single configuration. So they tend to be a little bit more conservative with their estimates. All right. Um, so I'll tell you what, guys. I, oh, sorry. I'm going to do the fans split up. Everyone's, everyone's fan grilling out. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna split the fans up. And we'll see how that looks. Cause right now, like, if you put them both on the floor rail, you can get them. Well, you can get them pretty close. Actually, no. I'm gonna do it this way. I like this way better. Okay, I've decided. I do them on the lower rail. They'll be a little bit closer together. We'll see. Let's see how things look. I don't think this would be a terribly difficult thing to change up after the build was done because you just pop off the fronts, remove those screws, and then you could just shift the fan up and down if you wanted to. Ah. I love my power screwdriver. You gotta get the lithium ion one though. The other one. I had the other one before this and it just, it would not hold a charge. I'd have it plugged in, it would work just fine if I took it like right, right off the wall, but like I don't have it plugged in all the time. This one I have to charge like once every three months. It's very nice. Okay, fan number one for intake. Fan number two for intake. And I'm uh, angling these so that both of their wires come out at, at about the same spot. Alright, I hope this lines up. It does. Praise Jesus. Okay. Here we go. Never sure what to talk about while I'm just screwing things in. It's kind of weird. So what's everyone got plans Saturday? Lots of things. Oh, wait, I have another donation. Min Kwan Kao. Min Kwan Kao. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. It says, I'm Australia. I'm an Australian. It's like 4 a.m. Uh, by the way, isn't the case the 740 Air Carbide, not the Air 540? Yes, I did, sw I did swap out the case for this. That's mentioned down in the comments. Um, actually, this build was specifically delayed. I was, I was supposed to do this build in August. And it was delayed to September specifically so I could build in this case. And even though I parted the whole system out, sorry, I did not connect that properly. Even though I parted this system out like last month, uh, I was okay to change the case simply because 
Well, one, it's nice to build in a new case and get, you know, just get a feel for it and give people the opportunity to check it out. But two, uh, it's a very, very, it's a very similar layout and design case to the Air 540. It's, it's still the cube design, the wider footprint. Um, and I do have an Air 540, so who knows? I don't promise anything. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. Probably not. I have too much other things to do. Actually, I have three builds to do this month. Lots of builds. All right. That goes back on the front. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. It's got little. It's got little pockets that it sits in. That is nice. Keeps a little bit sturdy. Okay. So fans are now installed. Ta -da. Does it look like a computer yet? It's getting close. Holy crap, I have 4,500 people watching this. You guys are awesome. Everyone is just replacing Saturday morning cartoons. I guess it depends where you are. Because for some people, like if you're on the East Coast, it's a little bit later. I mean, if, if it's England, perhaps this is like primetime TV or something. You're watching this instead of the BBC? I guess I'll start, well, <laughs> it is too bad that I can't put this other side panel back on without that top and the front being on this. I guess I can put the top and the front back on. No, I don't want to do that yet. If I put it back on now, then I'll figure out some reason why I need to remove it before the build is done. Okay. Just wedge those cables down in there. They'll be fine. Another nice thing about me building this today instead of yesterday is that although it is warm, it's not quite as warm. It's only like 81 degrees Fahrenheit in LA today. It's just cooler by 15 or 20 degrees than it has been for a lot of the summer. Okay. Although the London trip I went on uh, last month, I actually missed, I think, one of the warmest periods of the summer, so that was kind of nice. All right, I'm just feeding these cables back here, getting them tucked out of the way. And then we're gonna get the motherboard going. There we go. Hey, go in there. Go in there, okay. Uh, all right, let's give you guys top down again. There it is. It's very stable. So I can zoom out a little bit. Right, let's focus, not zoom. Okay, there's the inside. So our rear I.O. is back here. And then you'll notice the standoffs here. So standoffs are very, very important. Never forget standoffs when you're building a computer. They're basically little spacers that give some space between where the motherboard is sitting because the motherboard uh, needs to be grounded in certain locations, and those certain locations are where the mounting points are, which, if you look at the bottom of the motherboard, even though it's not in focus, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine mounting points, which means in here there should be nine standoffs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this case, they came pre-installed, so good job, Corsair. This one also has this little nub version of the standoff. This one doesn't need to be screwed in, but that nub will stick into the motherboard when it's dropped into the case. and It'll kind of hold it in place and line everything up so you can get those other screws installed with the standoffs. Now the one thing that I almost always do now before I make this installation, this next step of installation, is I try to make sure that I've double checked the standoffs and the screws that come with it for the standoffs, which are probably these and they do give you an extra standoff in here and that's for some of the different layouts that uh, this case can handle when it comes to different motherboard sizes but i just like to take one of the screws that i'm going to be using to mount and it'll stand off and i just screw the screw into the standoff like so pretty boring pretty straightforward uh, the reason i do this though is to make sure that the screws i'm using are the right threading for the standoff because there are two different kinds. There's M.2, or M, M .2, there's M, M3 and UNC 632, metric and imperial, 
and it's a pain in the ass if you get them confused, especially with motherboard stand-ups. Okay. Here goes the motherboard. Wait. Motherboard down into the case. Ta-da, and that center nub right there just holds everything in place for me, so that's super convenient. Now, again, more screws to screw in. Um, wait, where'd my screwdriver go? The big one, not the big one, I mean the real one. Now, for this part, I would typically not use, where'd that go? All right, I lost the screw. It's fine. Oh wait, now I found it. Uh -huh. Mag magnetic screwdrivers, they are your friend. Um, yeah, so I would typically not want to use the mechanical screwdriver that I've been using, or the, the powered screwdriver for this particular part, because these screws, when you're installing the motherboard, they really don't need to be tightened down. They, you, want them to, you want them snug, you know, you don't want them loose, but you don't need to like crank down on them or give them any torque. It's really just to hold everything in place and uh, using something like a mechanical screwdriver. I mean, it's probably, you'll probably be fine, but honestly, you don't want to over torque it on the, onto the motherboard because you do have a chance that you might crack the PCB or something like that. And that would be a sad day, a very sad day indeed. All right. That is five. Three to go. Six. Seven. And one more. Okay. Now you might notice looking at the top down view here as well, although it's dark. I made it too dark earlier. Let me make it brighter. It's a little brighter. Uh, yeah, so you might notice here there's a, there's a pretty good amount of space here. So that's part of like, I guess, kind of the nice thing about this case, but also the reason the case is so big. You have a good amount of space here below the motherboard, a good amount of space here above the motherboard. Nice thing about the space above is if you have coolers, like a 240 red, like I'm gonna be installing, gives you plenty of room for that, especially if you're doing push-pull or something like that. You'd have room potentially for two sets of fans and that cooler in between, or just a thick radiator. Um, also up front. Plenty of room that way. Even room on the bottom, and there is again a 240 or uh, 480 mounts. Uh, sorry, 280. Yeah, <laughs> 120, 240, or 280 mounts at the bottom as well. And then you got lots of these grommets for passing your cables through wherever you might need to. Um, so, cool. That's installed. Before I do the CPU cooler up here, this is a very this is a very helpful tip for any of you guys who haven't built a system like this before. That cooler is going to take up a decent amount of space here. Um, probably not as big of a deal in this case because there's lots of room, but there's two those two power plugs for the CPU which are up here, the four pin and the eight pin. I'm gonna plug those in before I install that. That'll make sure that I have room for everything to get through there. And routing those cables and plugging them in after you've installed the CPU cooler up there is really a pain in the ass. There's also front panel connectors down here and a lot of other stuff like that. So let's move on to plugging in a bunch of cables. The fun part. All right, I was I was gonna do modding in chat, but I, <laughs> there's there's too much chaos going on in there for me to pick out any one person. It's okay. All right, so CPU and CPU. Both of these coming from the back. Both of these will poke out through the grommets up here. Can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see. Of course you can see. Everything's set up perfectly. Um, this is a 4 plus 4 power connector for the CPU. Which always makes me double check which of the plugs is actually the plug that I want to plug in. It was that one. They are keyed. There's square plugs and little D-shaped plugs. And that will make it so that you can't plug in the wrong side of that CPU connector. If you do have a 4 plus 4 like the one I just plugged in. This 
Next one is just the eight, though. And since that's its own little block altogether, it snaps in like that. And then I'm just going to pull the excess cable back to make sure that I've got lots of room there for that uh, cooler when it goes up on top. Um, all right, this is the plug for the fan. There are two CPU fan headers up here. So here's why I would start thinking about where are my CPU fan headers? Where are they gonna plug in? Which one's gonna plug in where? Uh, this motherboard has plenty of CPU fan, er, fan headers in general, so I know I'm gonna be able to connect them all. It's just a matter of which one plugs in where. These two plugs right here are for a high amperage fan or a pump. So I'll probably wanna plug in the pump over there. But I'll figure that out in a minute. Basically, I don't, I'm not going to plug this one in there is what I'm saying. Where should I route this to then? Chassis fan. Where's all my chassis fan headers? Maybe I will use that one down there. High amperage. All right, let's do the high amperage one. That should be fun. This is a weird routing for this cable. I'll try to tuck it in so it's pretty. There we go. Ta-da. I don't know how much of that you guys can actually see. That's the other downside of doing the live builds like this is, well, first it's getting warm, and second, it's harder to get those close-up detail shots. Okay. All right, let's do motherboard main 24 pin, just cause. Up here. Oh. Well, that grommet that I want to use is kind of blocked by the drive cage. I if I can, oh, I can. Haha. <laughs> wait. Wait for it. So that drive cage is removable. I'm just trying to see if I can get it through there without removing the drive cage. It's, it's thinking about it. Ah, ha, ha. Okay. I am dislodging the grommet though, so I'll reset that. Okay, that's better. Because actually, I would not have been able to do that if this wasn't a 20 plus 4 pin connector. Some of them come in a full block, block of 24. Some of them, uh, the, old ver the old connector for motherboards before they added those extra 4 pins was just a 20 pin. And uh, a lot of them are modular that way. All right, here's the main motherboard power. So those are all of the power connectors for the motherboard. So that's nice to have that taken care of. I'm starting to think about cable management back here, but there's still much to be done. So I'm not thinking about it too hard. I do have these fan connectors to plug in. I thought there was another chassis fan header somewhere along. Oh, there it is. Two chassis fan headers. You'd almost think I had done a review on this motherboard and I knew where things were. One here. And one here. Oop. There we go. All right, so those are the two fans from the front connected there. This fan here is uh, connected right up there. Again, extra, extra cabling has been pulled back behind the motherboard tray. And man, it's getting warm. I'm gonna turn on the AC, guys, just for a moment. We'll see how bad it is. Let me know. It hasn't kicked in yet. When it kicks in, the, the lighting will dip down for a second. Austin, Austin, thank you for your donation. Uh, oh, the fan grill is missing on the back fan. That's why everyone was talking about the fan grill. Thank you, Austin, for your donation. Thank you for commenting. And that's what you guys are talking about right there. Well, see? So I guess the nice thing about doing live builds is you get people to tell you when you're doing stuff wrong. I'm glad I caught that, though. Thank you, Austin. Probably a bit easier to do that right now. Oh, the AC is nice. 
Because it's like right there and it's just hitting me directly. Uh, I hope it's not too loud. Because I'm probably going to want to leave it on. Trolls! My audio, my audio shouldn't be that bad. I have, my, I have the mic right here. I actually moved it around. Last time I had the mic over here and I kept having to turn this way to actually talk. But believe me guys, setting up something like this... Uh, audio is probably worse because I just turned the AC on too, so that's that's not gonna help at all. Yeah, believe me, something like this is not a simple thing to set up. Getting the cameras positioned where they should be, so where I can see every, where you guys can see what's going on. Having the lights where they should be, so that there's enough lighting. Um, you know, it's it's far from perfect, but <laughs> it is. It does seem to be functional for now, so I'm perfectly happy with it. But yeah, Mike. Mike's situation is probably also because we're out here in space in the middle of the garage more so than when I'm back over there at the desk. It's a little bit better coordinated. I like these fan grills. I used one of these fan grills. I pulled it off of a power supply and I used it on Arctic Panther back there to hold the pump. And I mounted the pump to the metal fan bracket and it worked really nicely actually helped us get around a potentially game change game game ending dilemma all right see i thought you guys were making jokes about fan fan grilling fan grilling i don't know yay all right fan grill thank you again for the donation Moving along, what's next? I don't know where I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I guess front panel. Yeah, let's do front panel stuff. It's annoying, and I'll get it out of the way. And I'm pretty sure that the LED. Yeah, I'm not sure what the LED situation is here. I'm gonna have to read up on that probably and get back to you guys because I did not uh, check on that before going live. There's an LED button on the front of this case. There's an LED lead coming out of all these front panel connectors. So that appears to give you some control over the LEDs via the button on the front, which is a nice feature to have. I like being able to quickly turn off LEDs when they're there. Um, I just don't know how, how it works and whether it needs some accessory to go along with it or something like that. I, like, I don't see, I, I thought maybe there might be like a, a hub or something in here where you can connect all the fans to and then whatever but most of the time if a like if a fan like you know one of these fans has leds built into it and they're controllable usually there'll be an extra lead coming off of there just for the leds all right so this is the led switch one i'm just going to leave that one behind and we'll just do this standard set all right, front panels down here. Like so. And on to the most annoying part of any computer build. I'm just crushing the cables over there, but I don't care. Here, you all can share my pain, maybe. I will say it's nice since Motherboard manufacturers have started labeling the motherboard. Our LED. Plus. Oh. When you are connecting front panel connectors, remember that the switches don't matter as far as positive and negative. Our switch. But the LEDs do. LEDs, you do need to have the plus where it's supposed to go with the plus and the negative to go where it's supposed to go with the negative. Uh, power LED reset switch. Well, that's confusing, Asus. Ah, oh, this is a shot in the dark. Hold on. All right, I need the manual. Sorry to hear. All right, 
I'm resorting to the manual here because although it is listed which is which on those front panels, it is not very clear that lower row where one set ends and the next set begins. Come on, front panel connectors. This is probably the most engaging interesting part of today's build. Come on Asus, where are you listing those? Analog. USB. USB. No. Wow. There it is, front panel. Okay. Aha! There's a ground and a reset and a no connection. NC. I'm glad I looked at this. I, I was guessing wrong. Okay. There's two pins for the hard drive LED. Next to that, two pins, a ground, and uh, the reset actual connector for the reset button, and then a NC, which means it does nothing. Right? Yeah, it does nothing. And then the LED, no. Is this upside down? Oh, you know what, it's upside down. Turn <laughs> No, okay. I am 90% sure that I had done that correctly. But the nice thing about front panel connect, no, there's, no, there's nothing nice about front panel connectors. If I got it wrong, then we'll know when I attempt to start this thing up however long of time that that is all right so there's front panels now i need usb yeah usb we have audio oh the audio right on the fence about even connecting front panel audio i never use it i i plug it in because it's there And if I didn't, I, like, I'd feel bad for there being a plug that's supposed to be plugged in that's not. Front panel audio is just really prone to uh, interference and stuff like that, so. All right, there's a massive USB 3.0 connector. Is there another one of those? No, there's not. There's, there is two, but they're done at the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> so, all that's left, theoretically, is getting that SATA drive connected, the graphics cards installed, and a few more power connections. We're getting there. Oh wait, I forgot that audio. I'll do the audio. I will connect it, but I'm not going to like it. Actually, where is, oh, it's all the way over there. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to connect the front panel. <laughs> Why? Because it's got a blast of color right there. And I don't want that to be visible at all. And honestly, I'm never going to use them. I hate front panel audio. <laughs> okay. So we'll just leave that disconnected. Save ourselves a step. And move on. All right, got that peripheral power connector connected. Doing the SATA drive next. Question, 90 degree connector or no 90 degree con connector? That's a good question, I don't know. I will use the 90 degree connector if it's appropriate, but often it is not. So I do like there was a certain point in time when they started doing all 90 degree connectors on SATA cables. And I was like, no, there's you need straight ones sometimes. So they started doing this where they split it up. They'll give you half of them, give you all straight plugs. Half of them, you'll have the 90 degree connector. All right. Here is our SSD. It's got a little spacer. I'm gonna leave the spacer off. Although the spacer is probably 
something you might want for this type of case. Here, let, me, let me actually show you guys this rather than just doing it. So pretty simple for installation of the, of the SSDs or 2.5 inch drives. You literally just slide it in, uh, just slide it in like that. And then this little guy will snap in place and hold it there. Now it's gonna be hanging here loose, like it can rattle around, which isn't really a big deal for an SSD. Like I can just plug it in and it'll work. There are mounting holes up here. So if you did want to secure it, you could, although it might be difficult to reach. Anyway, it's an SSD. It, don't, it doesn't matter if it's jiggling around. So I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. And as for the angled connector, I'll go ahead and use it. Just again, just cause. Um, the way the angle connector looks on this one, it angles it down across the other drive base. So if I were to add more drives, I would probably swap that somehow. Anyway, though, around over here. You know what? I'm going to do the upper one. It's also helpful to double check your motherboard specifications as you're plugging in an SSD or that kind of thing. So I plugged it into this top slot here, just a standard SATA connector, so it's not that big a deal. But I would want to plug it into the SATA plugs that are natively controlled by the X99 chipset because there is an add-on uh, chip, I think an Asmedia on this board that gives a couple more SATA connectors. I think a couple of those are on the SATA Express down here. Um, they would still be good performance, but typically a, an additional um, controller that's kind of working as an as a in-between between, between um, either the chipset or the, the CPU and the actual storage is going to introduce just a tiny bit of latency. So for operating system drives and that kind of thing, it's usually best to connect directly to the native connector. Yeah. <clears throat> flipping back around. We just need some power for that SSD. Ta -da. And there we go. All right. So here are all my stinking connectors. <laughs> all right. So I'm on the fence about this. So each of these cables, this is for the power for the graphics card, has and a six plus two or an eight pin, and then a daisy chain six plus two or an eight pin. And I don't like the daisy chains. I hate how they look up there. They're very visible right at, right in the case panel uh, window, side panel window. So I might just try running these out straight and plugging just that end, end in. That's kind of what I did with the uh, $1,200 build that I did last month. But again, we'll see how things proceed. Actually getting the spacing right is also gonna be important. Yeah. Anyway, I haven't looked at chat in a while. Oh! Uh, I could try, but probably not.
Okay, band hammer was laid down. Sorry, it was indiscriminate. I was looking at anyone who was posting large blocks of anything in chat and banning them. So, sorry guys, but it's kind of annoying when people do that. Anyway, let's move on. Let's get graphics cards. Not quite sure what the appropriate, like, I need to get a better Lazy Susan. I have that motorized one. It's a very good one. But I, I need one that just sits flat on the table. Because doing builds like this, it's often very convenient. I just set the uh, set the system on that. And then you can spin it around whatever which way to get at the front or the back. Especially for cable management. That is nice. All right. Let's get our graphics cards going here. Oh, you know what? I'm not doing graphics cards yet. They've got CPU cooler. What the hell's wrong with me? That's important. <laughs> I know what that is. Okay, anyway. Moving on. That is part of the reason why... I don't know what it is with YouTube chat being so volatile in that regard, but when we're streaming... Well, it's also probably because when we stream our live show, we've been doing it for a while, and we have uh, a good set of moderators who really help us out, whereas... I do not do regular live streams to my, oh god, messing up the thermal face. I do not do live streams to my YouTube channel that often, so I need to figure out, get some good mods in here or something like that. But, <laughs> yeah, it's useless. Anyway, though, all right. Uh, so, I like I like this cooler from Corsair because it's actually the first time I've I've worked with one myself. Several pe other people have. I don't know. I got some fins that are a little bent. Not a big deal though. I like the tubing though. It's got this kind of you know, it's, it's got this wrap going on it that looks pretty cool. It's very thick, so it looks a little bit more burly. And yeah, it's, it's a nice little. Looks pretty sweet. And then Corsair gives you these accents along the sides to make sure everyone knows it's a Corsair product and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not modding anyone on the fly right now. Sorry, guys. That is. That would probably be a poor decision. All right. Now my real question here is going to be if I remember how to install this off the top of my head. Aha! I might. Because again, thank God for the freaking installation system that you have there. <laughs> Cody Man, again, thank you for the recommendation or for the suggestion. I have a long standing policy, though, which is that I've never. I never make anyone a mod who asks to be a mod. That's not to say you're not a legit person right now and you're not trying to help. I completely respect that, but um, yeah. For now, apologies to anyone who's dealing with Twitch or with YouTube chat. And uh, the good news is that in the YouTube comments, once this video has become just a YouTube video after the live stream is done, none of that will actually be shown. So, bravo. So, I am installing this blind because. I think I know how it's done, but I have at least by by sight recognized the standoffs. You get these little posts, and these posts either go into the back plate, this silly plastic back plate that you put on if you're not using a uh, if you're not using an Intel setup or if you're not using a enthusiast Intel setup. And there's also ones for AMD and stuff. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to have to use these fans, 
which I'm sure is fine. Right? And I have the option to connect them to the pump and power them through that. But I don't think I want to do that. I don't like doing that. Actually, I'm going to route both of these to the CPU fan headers on the motherboard. That way the CPU fan headers can control the speed of these. And the pump, I'll just plug straight into the pump header since this motherboard has one of those. Um, that little plastic piece. That's all right. It's gone forever. Do I have any? Ah. Why am I using YouTube uh, instead of Twitch? Uh, the reason is because I would stream to both, but it's difficult enough for me being one person to keep up even with just one set of chats, to say nothing of two sets of chats. Also, my original intent was to get all this set up and stream with, uh, uh, with OBS, because that's where I actually had this set up before, but OBS didn't work. I actually had to sw switch to XSplit, and whereas XSplit, we have set up to stream to both locations before, um, we did not do that. All right, I didn't have it set up to do that this time, so anyway, long story short, just, just decided to go to YouTube. This was originally not supposed to be a live build. This was just going to be a build, but, um, you know, I opted to, <laughs> opted to do it live. Anyway. Okay. I'm going to get these fans on here. And then we'll get this installed, and then we'll get that connected to that. Everything will be perfect. Where did those long screws go? Yeah, the, um, the installation process for any computer is going to be significantly longer if you have an aftermarket cooler. just kind of how it goes. I don't know of a better solution for that. There's still no good like aftermarket CPU cooler that's come out that I look at and I'm like, yes, that is how aftermarket CPU cooler should be installed. It is both easy and feels secure. I don't know. That's just I've never come across that in my lifetime. Yeah, what confuses me is I have no idea. Is that supposed to say something? It's very weird. Anyway, though. <laughs> Trying to get the proper number of washers. One, two, three, four, and one, and two. Does anyone else ever have difficulty figuring out where washers should go? It's like, unless I have the exploded view, it's like, oh, screw washer thing, another washer, and then the thing. I was like, wait, the washer, where should the washer be? Anyway, in this case, I'm putting it on the outside. I could be wrong. <laughs> It's okay though. Oh, there it is. Can I do a Harambe build? What would what would be involved in a Harambe build? Also, I've been pronouncing it Harambe. That sounds right to me. Is it Harambe though? I've also heard people say Harambe. Harambe. Alright, setting these up to push. This is not the most practical setup for these. Um, I mean, it all depends on how far down the road you're thinking. These are going to be pushing air that way, so up out of the case, they'll be acting as exhausts. Uh, the idea here is to theoretically have negative airflow, or I'm sorry, positive airflow, um, or positive pressure inside the case with all the, with all the fans running. Although it's hard to say. I got two relatively unblocked 140s at the front. One relatively unblocked 140 at the back. 
and then two uh, 120s, which will be here at the top, that will be restricted with the radiator in front of them. It's a good question whether this system will have positive or negative airflow. I suppose if you could really, it, like what would be more ideal, positive or negative, would be like somehow neutral airflow. I wonder if that's possible. Somehow, with all the, how would that even work? How would you measure that? You'd have to have some extra port on the case somewhere where you could determine how much air is going in. Or like, you know, if the port, if, if, if it flaps open, you know, then you have positive pressure. If it flaps inward, then you have negative pressure, but you want it to be perfectly still somehow. I want to do a build like that. That'd be awesome. <coughs> All right, what time are we at here? Is it really 11.45? How long have I been doing this? Time has slowed to a stop for me. Confused, getting thirsty. Hopefully I'll be done in time for lunch. That's my main goal. All right, ta-da, there she is. Now we will delicately, ever so delicately, drop this down, wait. <laughs> I really wish I had the plastic cover for that. I'm also gonna be uh, lazy here, lazy slash efficient, and use the uh, CPU, or the, the cooling paste that's on there. So we'll see how that goes. Getting those cables tucked back, dropping this down like so. Looks like there is room. You guys can kind of see what's going on from the vertical view. I had I had my other view going before I had to switch over, and that was that was the top down view with with the other view with me in the corner. And I wish I still had that. These are case mounting hardware. Right up oh, here. We go. Two, three, four, five. Oh, look, exactly eight of these. That must mean that they are the correct ones to use. All right. Man, I thought it was almost done, and then I had forgotten about the CPU cooler. I hope these are the right ones. Oh, smart. Smart Corsair. You know what, I bet this is where those washers were supposed to go. <laughs> but I will say that Corsair does seem to have placed, it looks like, yeah, there's a block there that prevents you from destroying your, prevents you from destroying your radiator by using the screws that are too long. That is super convenient. All right, let's find an alternative. No, those are too big. something. Maybe they want me to use these. They might want me to use Those are too small. Curses. Well. How much for this case? Uh, I actually don't know off the top of my head. Uh, it's new from Corsair and I don't think it's actually available for sale yet. So I'm not, I'm not positive about that. I feel like it's in the $150 range, but don't quote me. And I may or may not need to find some replacement screws for this. <laughs> yeah, I think I do. That or Corsair's, these are too long. <clears throat> yeah, those are too long. I would not want to even risk that. Do you know what to do, Corsair? Help me. Tell you what, I have two short ones. 
I can at least get it mounted in place. And we'll proceed from there. Just problem solving one step at a time. Aha. All right, good news is I just need to find more of these and then everything will be good, which I should have. I do have an extensive screw collection. Oh yeah, that's way better. That's way better. Why would the other ones even be an option? Two of those, that should that should hold, right? Alright. Don't tell Corsair this is a Fantex accessory box. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sure no one will let them know. Alright. So this is why whenever I build a system and I have like leftover screws and stuff like that, I never chuck them. I just put them in my big box of screws and stuff and then in the next build they come in handy. Right, so I'm just going to use six to uh, get this installed up here. Just use two for the center part. That should be plenty. Yeah, one thing you should always keep an eye on if you're mounting a radiator like this is the always try to use the screws that came with the radiator if you can. And again, I'm not sure if this is just me being confused because I have lots of stuff going on here and I set it aside wrong, or because I was supposed to have those those wash. I was probably supposed to have the washers here, but even with the washers, I feel like they would still be a little on the long side. But yeah, if you're screwing into a radiator. It's got these channels that go up and down. There's the fins that go in between, and those can get bent or whatever. I mean, you don't want to, but that's not a huge deal. The lines in between, the horizontal lines that you might, uh, you probably can't see, but they, they go, those are the actual channels with fluid in them. If you, if you screw a radiator, or um, if you screw a screw into one of those and puncture it, then the radiator's dead, like it's gone. So that's something to uh, keep an eye out for. Uh, thank you for this the spam and chat you guys are awesome let's <laughs> let's do top-down view again and we will finally have the CPU cooler installed yay okay can I do this with the Corsair logo in the right orientation I think maybe I can. Wait, okay, there's. Eh. Hold on. Okay, I had to double check that <laughs> there was nothing else on, on top of that, but everything should be fine. Alright, so I'm doing this. I feel like I would normally twist these cables in a different direction, but I'm um, trying to be a stickler and make sure that Corsair logo is straight up. So. I'll just do it this way. Not tightening these nuts down yet. I am simply getting them on, on all four corners. And then I will try to do the corners opposite one another. Um, okay. Where did my remote go? Oh, there it is. I turned off the air conditioner. We'll see how long I last. Okay, um, oops. Uh oh. <laughs> Help, I've lost one of these nuts. I misplaced a nut. The nut, nut placed. What did I do with it? Did it roll off the table? Is it in my pocket? It installed and I didn't notice. Oh man. Do you guys see it somewhere and you're not telling me? Wow. <laughs> I don't even want to look at YouTube chat right now. It is 
been taken over. Ah, there it is. Rolled under the case. Okay. All right, now we'll go uh, standard CPU cooler installation, which is opposite corners. And I'm just tightening, since I can do both corners at the same time, since these are thumb screwable, I'm just doing that. A few turns on each side, and we want to get this down nice and snug to provide plenty of uh, pressure between the copper plates on the CPU cooler and the CPU heat spreader itself. Give them all a final turn with the screwdriver. And that's nice and snug. Okay. Now this has a single power plug. I'm going to try to route this over to the actual pump connector. Can I go under this? Oh, that's sneaky. Don't try this at home, kids. I do not know if this is recommended or not, but I am going. I routed that cable underneath. Oh, wow. This is, <laughs> this is, this is strange. It's, look, look at that cable management there. It starts out over here. I tucked it under there. And it pops out here. It sneaks sneaks here underneath the <laughs> the memory, and then right over here to this fan header or pump pump header. Well, that last loop of it, yeah. Sorry, I'm nowhere near the mic either. This last loop here, I had a harder time tucking in, but it's okay. All right. Next, these, I'm not even going to use these, so I'm just going to tuck them back out of the way. And that should do. Okay. Now. Now, I think we are ready for graphics cards. Praise be to Allah. All right, <clears throat> graphics cards. Uh, at this point, I should give a shout out to Kyle, because one of these is his. I did, uh, again, contact Asus, because I wanted to do uh, all Asus stuff in here that, with the X99 board and Strix because they have their R lighting software, which allows you to control it all, and I wanted to try that out, but alas, they didn't have any available for me. They all got sent out to other people, so I might still do an Asus GPU review in the future, hopefully, but um, for the purposes of this build, just wanted to get it all together, and these EVGA for the win cards are no slouches, in the least. In fact, I believe these just won like Customer Choice Award on Newegg or something like that. Uh, Hatarenko, thank you for your donation and thank you for the hearts. Right back at ya. You can tell which of these is which because mine was... I boxed mine up a lot better than Kyle's. Kyle's a little haphazard. I'll clean all this stuff up later. Uno. Dos. Wow. This this is definitely mine because I put all these covers back on and everything. See, Kyle's has nothing. I haven't put the plastic back on the back plate. That's silly. All right. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think about these SLI covers? You keep them on or you take them off? I'm always on the fence about that. Kyle's has weird stuff on it. It's like dusty. There's strange foreign markings. Hold on.
There we go, nice and shiny. Okay. <clears throat> Do mine in the uh, top slot, I guess? Oh wait, I gotta remove these. I feel like we're in the home stretch, guys. I was anticipating this build would take one to two hours, and I think it's coming up on two hours sometime here soon. But I'm happy with everything. Uh, here we go. The Asus board provides single slot spacing, or, well, yeah. There, I don't think there's a standardized way of talking about that, the spacing. So, yeah, there's one slot of space in between each of these two slot graphics cards. So you actually have the first slot, second, third slot, and then fourth slot is where the next GP goes in. I prefer that, especially with these style cards with the fans on them. You want to have uh, plenty of airflow to those if you can. Uh, Alan Warwick, thank you for your donation. He's used the H100 IV2, and he says if you flip it so that the tubes are back here, it's a little bit more natural, which I might do. I'm going to leave it as is for now just because it is functional and everything's installed, and I don't think I'm going to have any conflicts as far as the tubing and everything goes. We'll see how that looks, and maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll get some feedback from people and see if it's really bothering that much. I don't think it looks too bad as far as the, the, the tubing goes right now, but um, yeah. One slot space. Okay, let's do top-down view here for the installation of the graphics cards. Not that you can see it or anything. That's better. All right, we'll do Kyle's on the bottom. That's how he prefers it. Okay. You know, I've noticed with these steel reinforced slots, is they don't give you quite that like snap, snap in, yeah, it's installed feel. Take a little bit, it's more just like it, it slots in there and then you kind of seat it a little bit wiggle it around, um, flip it and reverse it or something. All right. Oh, plastic. Oh, <laughs> Wow, I didn't even think about this. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> wow, that would have kind of sucked. Did not consider, but fortunately it's not a problem. So I have a high bandwidth SLI bridge for this because if you're using the new GPUs, the new 10 series GPUs from NVIDIA, they want you to use high bandwidth, uh, the high bandwidth bridge for SLI. And... Uh, yeah, I have one. It's a gigabyte bridge. And I realized that it might not be the right spacing, but it is. Just like that. Okay. It will not blend in with the system at all, but it's the only high bandwidth SLI bridge I have right now, and I'll worry about it later. Maybe I'll. Oh, oops. Magnetic screwdriver. You want one. Um, yeah, uh, uh, maybe I'll hit up Jacob or EVGA and see if they can give me a high bandwidth SLI bridge that would blend, match a little bit better with these EVGA cards. Or, you know, Asus has one too. Or I just get the one straight from NVIDIA. Okay. Ta da. All right, let's do that bridge since I was thinking about it. HB SLI bridge. Now we just need power, power to the GPUs. System's getting heavier. All right, I kind of waited on this because I wasn't sure where the best place would be for these to pop out. I guess I have two of them right here. 
We'll do that. And I'm going to do just just above each card. We'll come up in the back. And oh man, those extra plugs. Those are going to bother me. got caught on the uh, fan cable and it was pulling the fan cable out. Final part. Hmm. I think this might work. So I'll come around with each one like this. To connect. And then I'm just going to take that extra daisy chain from each one. If I was doing this permanence uh, and I didn't care about voided warranties, I have been known to just snip these off before, snip them right down at the base, make sure there's no wire loose or anything hanging around that could short on anything, and that has worked for me. But since I'm not interested in voiding warranties right now, I will just go this route. They go in there. Three, oh, so close. Why are you being like this? Don't be like this. And four. Yay. All right. Did anyone hear that? That was Hero. <laughs> he just farted. Hero just farted. Pretty. <laughs> pretty. He. He doesn't, he's not like a dog that farts all the time, but when he farts, man, that was, it sounded like a human fart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob Woodby, thank you for your donation. Can I stream more at this time? I could try. Morning is a good time for me to record usually, especially during the summer because it gets so hot here. Um, but yeah, I will I'll definitely consider doing this more often so you guys can watch from the UK. Uh, what would I recommend? A K70 from uh, Corsair or a Master Keys Pro from Cooler Master? That is a difficult decision. Um, I've worked, I have the Master Keys Pro, I use that over there. I do I do have a K70, although I, I haven't really, it's actually a K70 that you can't buy because it's the one that came out with, well, maybe you can now, I don't know. You remember the Corsair, um, the, the, the Tramp Stamp logo they were going with for a while um, that they cut off? Hold on. Uh, I, I had one during the tramp stamp logo era that was actually right as they were starting to create that so they made some that didn't have the tramp stamp logo and i've got one of those anyway point point is they're both good keyboards uh i would say this the nice thing about the master keys pro is you can control it all with the keyboard itself so once you figure out how to like do the commands and whatever you can just punch it onto the keyboard you don't need to look at software whatever or, or anything like that so that's kind of nice because you can, you know, means you can take the board on the go and that kind of thing, and it will still work. However, 
Um, it's not quite as feature rich as far as being able to do lots of RGB stuff like the K70 is. So I would say base it on that. I mean, if you're not, if you're not particularly picky about the aesthetics of either one, then base it on what you want to do with it. If you think the convenience of being able to program stuff into the keyboard itself, even colors and stuff like that, it's pretty feature rich what you can do with it just without software. Then go for the Master Keys Pro. If you want to be able to do more stuff via software, uh, Corsair has much more well-developed software, but it is a bit confusing to use. I haven't used it recently. I don't know if they've made any changes to it or anything like that, but that would be my advice on that question. I hope that helps. Um, all right, I think these are connected. This is not ideal. I could do more stuff to that to make it look nicer, but you know what? This is all together. So why don't we do the, uh, the next bit, which is first making sure that cables are managed more or less, which sure this, oh, you know what I haven't done? Oh crap. That's a, that's a miss. Oh, thank God. All right, there's still room. I never plugged in these two fans for the uh, H100i. Hold on. All right, fans are plugged in. So that would be a big pain in the ass if this case wasn't as big as it is. The case is tall enough that even with the, the fan and radi fans and radiator installed, I'm still able to access the top row of the motherboard, so that's kind of nice. Sometimes they're more condensed and this blocks that completely and I would have had to pull that off in order to, or at least pull it out of there in order to reinstall that. Let's put this thing back together though. Uh, front goes on first. Not mistaken. That's not the front, that's the top. I also realized I never switched the camera back. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, uh, here's the front. The front does not go on the back, the front goes on the front. If you guys want to see my cable management, it doesn't exist. It's just a myth. <laughs> I'm literally leaving all this stuff just as is because there's nothing back here that's a concern for me as far as getting hot. Power supply has its own uh, airflow, so I'm just going to wedge it in there. Again, my plan is to do more, uh, a little bit more work on this. I'm going to do a follow up. Uh, video where I do some testing and everything so for that I might make some changes or move some stuff around or whatever but um, since this live build has already gone about two hours or so yeah it's just about the two hour mark right now I believe uh, <laughs> I should probably proceed I've also just now noticed that taped inside this uh, side panel is another <laughs> another mesh it goes on yeah wants, wants to go on that way there we go so yay, another, another mesh intake cover for the power supply. That's also nice. And yeah, I was right. This, the front side of this side panel is completely held on by this um, front piece of the case there. So it won't go on with that front piece off. Thumb screws. Okay. Now stuff is bothering me. Whatever, it's fine. Oh, 
God, it's heavy now. All right, guys, so uh, there's the build. Ta-da. What do you think? I think these orange accents on the Gigabyte SLI bridge are kind of bothering me. Uh, and I think I want to plug it in and make sure it, it works. How are things looking? Looks alright to me. Hey, we have lights. That's that's good. Time for power. Yay. It's glorious. All right, I'm going to go behind the camera and zoom in on it and stuff. That's as far as I can go. <laughs> Okay, so that was, that was a sexy close-up shot you guys got. That, that was as far as I could zoom in with the camera from that angle, but um, everything's working, so that's good. Fans are working. Got the LEDs in the front, LEDs in the back. Wait, it's got kind of a white and blue thing going on right now. Yeah, not bad at all. Anyway, guys, I am going to cut off this live stream. Uh, again, more content coming on this build. I'm going to do some work with it, do some testing, some benchmarking, do a follow-up video just like I did with my $1,200 build that I built last month. Uh, I've got two more builds coming up this month as well. Uh, I did the monthly builds just a couple days ago that I always do at the beginning of every month. And for those, I'm not going to be building the $15,000 build. I'm sorry. It's just a little bit too much for me to gather together. But I do plan to build the $500 build, uh, so that should be fun. And then my wife's build... I'm finally going to be uh, rebuilding that actually probably later this next week. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. Thanks to everyone who hung out in chat. Wait, I have last, one last green message. Brendan's. thank you for your message. And he says the radiator orientation is just fine. I think it's doing a fine job right there. Actually, you know what I should... Okay, one more thing before I close. I'm going to do this. Put the side panel back on. I will also say that after some initial noise, everything calmed down very, like I haven't, I've done nothing as far as adjustment wise in the BIOS or operating system and it's uh, staying very quiet. Ah. Oh no. Oh, Corsair. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes they put the plastic on the Plexi before they like install the Plexi and then the plastic goes underneath some other piece and then can't remove it. How am I going to get this inner piece without scratching the thing? Aha. There we go. <clears throat> Ta-da. All right, build is builded. And there she be. The, the front angle shot. There's, there's a reflection now. Okay, that's probably better. Okay, now, now I can wrap things up. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Thanks to you guys again who have been watching live. Sorry chat was a bit uh, chaotic, but thanks for sticking with it. Leave me comments down in the comment section. Of course, let me know what you think of this build. Uh, links to all the parts I used are in the description. More stuff coming soon like I already talked about. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, you get extra bonus points as well. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Oh, wait. I got another $5 donation. Ryan Baker, thank you. Thank you for your donation. Trying to keep me from leaving. Uh, is the... All right. So, so, 
Would a 240 millimeter radiator be okay for two Fury X's? I would say yes, because one Fury X uses one 120 millimeter radiator and it seems to do fine. More radiators might give you lower temps, but you're probably fine with a 240. And is it possible to replace the EK Predator tubing with hard tubing? I think it is, but don't quote me on that. It all depends if on the EK Predator has G1 quarter or standard fittings on the radiator and pump unit or whatever itself. You need to double check that or the block. Um, if you can remove those and replace those fittings with hardline fittings, then yes. And I would think that EK would probably do that. But yes. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye, everyone. Where do I click? Oh, no, over here.